So if you followed this channel from the start, you'll know that I've always used Sony cameras, starting out with the a6100 and then later switching to the a7 III. Sony cameras have always fit my needs as a photographer. And when I was researching which camera would be my first, Fujifilm was never really a brand that I looked at, with Sony, Nikon and Canon really being the main three that always popped up as good cameras for beginners, with me eventually settling on a Sony a6100. Now if you follow me over on Instagram, you may have seen that in the last few months I started a new job with Fujifilm in one of their Photo by Fujifilm stores, which are inside Primark stores in the UK. And probably a good time to mention that this video is not sponsored by Fujifilm or anything, um, nor was the decision to buy a Fujifilm camera really influenced by the fact that I now work for them, more so that I spent a little bit of time around Fujifilm cameras when I was doing the training for this job uh, back in London in their House of Photography store where I spent three weeks in October. But just as a bit of a cheap plug, if you do live in Manchester or Birmingham, pop into the Primark there and go and see the store. We sell Instax products and we also offer photo printing, film developing, uh, all sorts of photography stuff. So it's a really cool uh, shop if you are a photographer. So I'll be honest, even before this, I had become interested in Fujifilm's recent cameras, uh, mainly due to the X100V with its film simulation, um, the fixed lens making it perfect for like a street or travel photographer. And I'd been kind of looking at it as a while of if I had the spare money, I would pick up as a second camera. And then while spending three weeks around Fuji's current camera lineup, it was hard to not kind of start having those intrusive thoughts of maybe it was time for an upgrade. And the X-T5 was the one that really caught my eye. Uh, with its 40 megapixel sensor being an upgrade on my Sony uh, along with offering the same film simulation options that the X100V offers and also in general just being a very nice looking camera. So before I made this leap I decided it would be best to spend some time with the X-T5 out in the wild rather than just in the confines of a retail store and luckily Fujifilm offers a try before you buy service which allowed me to do this. The service was really easy to use, you are limited within the items they have available and you can only choose a certain amount of items to loan uh, but I was able to borrow some things for 7 days. There I was able to loan the camera itself along with a 16-55mm f2.8 kit lens and a 90mm f2 prime lens, uh, which will be perfect for trying out in some landscape and street environments. So after receiving the camera and lenses, I headed out to the Peak District where the plan was to complete the Goit Valley and Shining Tour Circular Walk, which was the perfect chance to start testing the X-T5. On this walk I only used 16 to 55 as I never really found a need to try the 90mm which I was more interested in using as a street photography lens. The main thing I really wanted to try on this walk was the camera's film simulation options and I found myself mostly using Velvia with its vibrant colours really popping on this picturesque hike. When it came to actually presenting these shots I wanted to show them straight out of the camera but when loading them into Lightroom I learned you can change which Fuji profile is applied and in doing this I found a lot of the shots from the day actually looked a lot better in Astia rather than Velvia. And so all the shots in this video are presented with Fuji profiles but with no other editing to give an idea of the kind of shots you can achieve straight out of the camera. My initial thoughts on the camera were that I was really impressed with the speed of the sensor, finding it much faster for focusing than the a7 III, though I wouldn't really get to test this properly until I tried some street photography, as the fastest moving object on this walk was Winston, who at its fastest is around 1 mile per hour. It did take a little getting used to changing the camera settings as expected when trying a new brand of camera, but for me, part of the X-T 5s charm is that the aperture, shutter speed and ISO can all be changed without the use of the camera's screen, making it feel more like a 35mm film camera than a mirrorless camera.
Anyway, this was a really good hike for testing the camera out, and I am actually going to be starting a series on this channel where I cover each of the hikes I do, uh, where I'm doing one per month this year, and doing photography while I do them. And uh, so keep an eye out for that, where I'll cover this one in much more detail. One of the main things I wanted to test on the X-T5 was its low light performance. Having used a full frame camera for the last two years, I knew that going back to a mirrorless, I would lose some of the low light performance. So I just wanted to see how much of a difference it would make. Honestly, with the shots I took, I could barely see a difference except for maybe a little more noise. And given that with my street photography at night, I usually either add a little grain anyway or use Lightroom's AID noise tool, this isn't a big issue for me. The only time I can see this really making a big difference would be if my sleepy ass finally decides to get up at 4am again for some astrophotography. So with testing the X-T5 in street photography, I went out on two different days with completely different weather conditions. The first was a day with heavy rain where I got some nice moody shots. These rainy day shots were also my first time out using the 90mm lens. Although I used a variety of film simulation profiles on this day, I found classic negative and classic chrome were great in the rain for creating a nice moody look to the shots. The second time out was on a much brighter day with some really nice light. As always with days like this, I used the shadows to frame people standing or walking through spots of light and got some really nice shots while using a range of different film simulations. So after just one week with the X-T5, did I end up making a leap and switching from Sony to Fuji? Well, if you've read the title of this video, you probably already know the answer to that. Yes, I did purchase the X-T5. Uh, about a month ago, I sold all of my Sony gear and picked up the X-T5 with the 18 to 55 kit lens, which you can currently get bundled with it. So since purchasing the X-T5, I've had much more of a chance to get used to the camera. And I've had a chance to add in some custom film profiles, which I used the Fuji X Weekly app for, which I definitely recommend picking up if you have a Fuji camera. I'm just so impressed with the images you can create directly out of the camera. As someone who loves the editing side of photography, it's great how much of a head start you can get using the film simulations. Having said that, going forward, I'd love to experiment more with what I can achieve straight out of the camera in future videos. So to conclude, I am really happy with my decision to switch from Sony to Fuji and I always find with each new camera that my photos just keep getting better the more I use it so I am really excited to be using the X-T5 going forward. So thank you so much for watching, if you did enjoy this video please give it a like, please subscribe and go and check out some of my other videos. Also go and give me a follow over on Instagram where I post all my shots. I'm really looking forward to getting more videos out with using the X-T5 so get subscribed and keep an eye out for those and I'll see you then.